morning, Pastor Carter. Good morning, church. How's everybody doing today? Praise the Lord. Lord, we're doing fine. Yeah, we're gonna keep on praying for Miss Jackie and her mom. Make sure make sure everybody's gonna get healed today and I see Nathan's a little sick today and we'll keep keep him in our prayers as well. Praise God, praise God. I thank you and I appreciate your prayers, Ryan. You're you're a prayer warrior, you're a personal prayer warrior. And I thank God for you. May God continue to bless you and Miss Tara and and, and Miss Jenna and watch over your household in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Ryan. Terry, Amen. Praise God, Pastor. Jeep girl in Colorado. Hey, Jeep, come on and say hello to us. Good morning, Pastor Carter and Church. Good morning. Did you have a wonderful Thanksgiving? Oh, yes, yes. How about you, Jeep? I did. Um, as you know, I had been going through quite a battle in this spiritual warfare and and God always gives us the victory and I praise him for that and um, I would like to give praise to God because I hadn't heard from my my son in about seven months and I hadn't heard from my daughter in a couple of months but I kept praying and praying and praying and praying and my son called and texted and my daughter came down for thanks for Thanksgiving, so I give God the praise. Hallelujah, Hallelujah! Praise God! That's wonderful. That's wonderful. And we thank God for you. We thank God. We thank God that we we know somebody in Colorado who is a prayer warrior and and a child of God. And you're standing in the gap for a lot of people in this nation. We give God the praise. Hallelujah! Praise God! We give a shout out. To Dustina. Hey, Dustina, can you come on and say hello? Pastor, good morning, church. Good morning, good morning. Thank y'all for the prayers for Nathan. We we all kind of got a little bit of the croup after coming back from Georgia from Thanksgiving. So I got allergies in my eyes right now and a little bit of a sore throat. But other than that, I'm blessed and highly favored. And the Lord's been good. So. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. We're going to be praying for you guys uh, at the end of the service. <clears throat> and believe God to strengthen you. By the way, Dustina will be bringing the word next week. She'll be bringing the word next week. We'll be, Jackie and I will be traveling. We'll be, uh, by the time this program comes on next week, we'll be in the uh, Indianapolis airport. Dustina's going to leave the service with her family. And we want you to be on because Dustina and her family, they always have a powerful word from the Lord. So we give God the praise. Thank you, Dustina. And thank, thank you. you for your family. I look forward to it. God bless y'all. God bless you too. Christy Carpenter in Idaho at the top of the nation. Hi, Christy. Good morning, all. How are you doing? Praise the Lord. Fine, Christy. And you? I'm doing awesome. Thank you. Praise God. Praise God. Give a shout out to that awesome man in your life. Your hubby, Aaron Carpenter. Tell Aaron Carpenter, Back to Basics Ministries, salutes him. I will. Thank you. And prayers, please, for my sister's boyfriend. She flies. He flies back to Whidbey Island today. What it's island are you Washington. going back to? Sorry, what? What island? Whidbey Island. It's in Washington. He's in the Navy, so they got to spend the week together, and he flies out today. So please pray for safe travels for him. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Father God, we just thank you. We ask that you bless um, this young man as he and his family travel back to uh, the naval, naval location. Give them travel grace. Build a hedge around them. Keep them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And we thank you in Jesus' name. And, and add to this, Lord, all the people who are traveling all over this nation, people who are returning home from Thanksgiving celebrations with their families. Give them traveling grace. Bless every plane, every train, every car, every bike, every pair of skates, every skateboard, 
every every pair of shoes. Uh, bless people who are traveling, Lord. Give them traveling grace. And we thank you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. <clears throat> Megan wants you, Christy, to type in his name. So type in his name in the in the uh, chat window, would you please? Yes. Tyler. Tyler. Thank you for Tyler. All right. Praise God. <clears throat> Jackie Carter, or is Jackie Carter on yet? My better half, or my better two-thirds. Okay, I see Jackie Fisher. Hey, Jackie Fisher, come on and say hello to us. Jackie Fisher. Hey, everyone. Uh, good morning, Pastor Carter and church. God bless you. Thank you, Jackie, and thank you, and God bless you and your household. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you. Let's get a shout out. Give a shout out to Robert Peary. Robert, come on and say hello to us. Yeah. Hey, church. How you guys doing? And praise the Lord. He's so wonderful. <laughs> Can you guys hear me? Or is uh -huh. me coming in? Great. No, I'm just blessed. Um, I'm just grateful. Um, uh, I just, I'm so grateful to be here today. Um, I'm actually was visiting my son and in Texas, he um, is in the service, and he's providing a, a mighty service, and to not just just to the to the to the United States, but he's serving the Lord too, and um, he's you know serving the Lord and doing mighty deed and, and and trying to bring peace to to whatever you know platoon he's doing. He's in the army, and so I'm just uh, blessed to be spending some time with him over the holidays and with the family. So we, we're just blessed. And, and, and I'm telling you, you know, there's a mighty work being done right now. God is moving. He's on the move. You know, the spiritual warfare is, is, is eclipsed. And I, I know God is, is trying to bring his warriors up front and he's trying to do a mighty deed in us to, to try and ward out anything that is coming to break his walls down and try to, you know, infiltrate, uh, infiltrate the, the, the power of his glory so i just i'm just blessed to know that you know god is is, is on the move he is on the move and trying to get us all together and, and and bring forth his name mighty name so i'm blessed to be here this morning good 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 day <laughs> praise god praise god thank you robert thank you my brother praise god let's bring on um megan megan lady you've been doing some traveling come on and tell us how you're doing Hi, Church. Hi, Pastor Carter and Jackie. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm um, I'm I'm blessed, and I'm enjoying Tennessee. This is completely different. Every faction of this state so far that I've been through, Anna and Georgia, is insanely welcoming. I've never in my life tried to get on the freeway and had people slow down to let me enter or merge. That's never happened in my entire Western life. <laughs> and I come out here and, I mean, everybody, it's, it's God bless you all the time. This Bible belt, this is, um, this is the spot right here. Thank you. Thank you so much, Megan. And God bless you. We praise God that you made it safely to Tennessee, that you're settling in and, and getting favor from people even on the freeway. Praise God. You know she's a special woman when people slow down on the freeway to uh, to let her come by or get on. They don't do that in Georgia. Uh, 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 well, praise God. Hopefully they will. Glory to God. Well, let's bring Zisla in from Texas. We, we've, got, we've got a lot of people from different parts of the nation. Zisla, come on Hi. in from Texas. Hi, Pastor Carter. Um, I have some news about Israel Gonzalez, that uh, Israel Gonzalez is the person that in May received both a liver and a kidney transplant from, from our Lord Jesus Christ made it possible. And so, can you hear me okay, Pastor yes, Carter? Yes, yes you're doing yes. very well. Okay. And so about two weeks ago, he underwent um, surgery. To, uh, he was thinking that they were going to remove the tubes from him to allow him, you know, to be able to 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 do better and and to you know be on his own. And it turned out that he had an infection, but that they went in and they had to redo the tubes and they cleaned him up. 
So we want to say thank you, Father God, that they caught it, you know, that they didn't just remove the tube, that he had something wrong, that they found it, and that they're going to heal him, uh, or, you know, with this new medication, that he'll be, you know, that he'll be able to continue on his healing and, uh, and then make the complete recovery. But his father sent me a text of happy Thanksgiving to me, and I wanted to, and it was just so, th- so thoughtful of him to remember, you know, the other people that prayed for him. You know, because if, if he didn't, if uh, he did not get this liver transplant in May, then he would not have been having Thanksgiving with his family. So we're just so thankful, you know, that my friend Israel Gonzalez was able to have the Thanksgiving with his family, and, and it's all praise to God. Hallelujah! Thank you for that wonderful, excellent <clears throat> report, Zizler, and praise God. And we thank God for Israel Gonzalez and the mighty work God has done and is doing in Israel's life. You know, just back in, in it was April where um, Zisla brought to our attention to the online church and to our class. We were studying on our online class, and she mentioned Israel who needed a transplant. He was nowhere near the transplant list. The doctor said he could not receive a transplant because he was not, was not physically ready. And we prayed, we prayed, hallelujah. And Zisla can tell you the Lord answered prayers. Not only did he answer prayers, but the doctors within three or four days declared, uh, uh, they changed their diagnosis. They declared that Israel was eligible for a transplant. He was physically ready. And, and, and within a week after that, he had a transplant, ladies and gentlemen. He had a transplant. That's how quickly God moved in the life of Israel Gonzalez in Texas. Praise God. God is, we serve an awesome God. We serve an awesome God. There is nothing too difficult for him. And so we worship him and we praise him. I just wanted to take a little time out to greet everybody and give you a chance to greet one another. This is a powerful church, an online church, where you can come online and and, and bless one another, be blessed by one another, and be blessed by the Holy Spirit as we worship God in the name of Jesus. We thank God. And so we're going to get ready to hear a word. The word is going to be powerful today. It's going to bless you. So many of you are going through some of the things we're going to preach about today. And God is going to set a lot of people free. And so we're going to, uh, before I preach the message today, and the message is going to be, um, No weapon formed against you shall prosper, part two. We're going to go back to two weeks ago when I introduced part one. Part one is on my YouTube channel. So go to YouTube, uh, Leroy Carter, and you'll see part one of No Weapon Form Against You Shall Prosper. But we're going to get ready for part two, and we're going to ask our friend, our friend from uh, Maryville, Pennsylvania, Ryan Trogler, to lead us in prayer. Mm-hmm. Uh, can you hear me, Pastor? Yes, I can. Okay. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for making a, another beautiful day today. We want to thank you for this online church and bless this online church. We want you to, to bless and, and protect and put a hedge of thorns around Pastor Carter and give him your awesome words so he can uh, teach us what your word is for today. We want to, we want you to put your hands on all the sick sick today and heal them. And we just want to say we just we love you and praise you and glorify you in Jesus Christ's precious name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. Praise God. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for Ryan's prayer. We thank you for what you're going to do, what you've done, what you will do. Praise God. Ladies and gentlemen, Isaiah fifty four seventeen says, No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Believe the word of God. Believe the word of God. God's word says every word of God is pure. Every word of God is pure. God is the deliverer of those who put their trust in him. Believe God's word. Everything you read in the Bible, believe it. Believe it. What God says, he will do it. He will hasten his word to perform it. Sometimes it takes patience. It takes a little bit of patience. To wait on the Lord. But God will come through. He always comes through. 
as we used to sing Natalie back in Chester, Pennsylvania in our little church years ago. He's never failed me yet. He's never failed me yet. Jesus Christ never failed me yet. And everywhere I go, I want the world to know. Jesus Christ never failed me yet. Then we put a hand clap in. He never failed me yet. He never failed me yet. Jesus Christ never failed me yet. And everywhere I go, I want the world to know. Jesus Christ never failed me yet. And so he will keep his word. He will keep his word. God's word will not return unto him void or empty. Everything he says he will do, he will do. And all you've got to do is trust him. Keep on being faithful. Wait on the Lord. The scripture says, wait on the Lord and be of good courage. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage. He will strengthen your heart. He will strengthen your heart. So you might be on here today and you've got a problem or a mountain of issues has come against you or you don't know your way out of this darkness. There is a way that seemeth right to a man, but the end thereof leads to death. But straight is the way that leads to life. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. And so we put our trust in Jesus no matter what the situation looks like, no matter what the circumstances look like, no matter what the medical report says, no matter what the statistics say, we put our trust in the Lord. Isaiah said to the Lord, Lord, who shall believe our report? Ladies and gentlemen, I choose to believe the report of the Lord. I choose to re to believe the report of the Lord because God's report is truth. God's word will not return unto him void or empty. What he said 2,000 years ago has come true, and many of the things uh, uh, that he said prophetically will come true. When God spoke in Genesis 3.15 and said to the devil, I will raise up my seed, the seed of a woman, and, and he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. God meant what he said. It was, all, it was almost 2,000 years later, maybe 3,000 years later, <clears throat> when Jesus Christ died on the cross. He bruised Satan's head. Satan still has a headache from when Jesus put a whooping on him on Calvary. Ladies and gentlemen, God's word will not return unto him void or empty. Every word of God is pure, and he is the deliverer of them who put their trust in him. So no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're experiencing, no matter what the doctors are saying, you put your trust in in the Lord. Be like the woman who had the issue of blood. She, had, she was bleeding for 12 long years. She spent her money. The doctors couldn't heal her. She had no more money. And you know, when your insurance runs out, the doctors disappear. Well, she had no other recourse. And then she kept on bleeding. And then she heard that Jesus was coming down the street. Now she had an issue of blood. According to the Levitical law, she was not allowed to be in public. She was declared unclean, unclean. Anyone touching her would be unclean. But this woman decided, today I'm going to violate the law. I heard that Jesus is coming down my street. And she got dressed. And, and despite the fact that the law forbade her for going out in the street, she pressed through the crowd. And she said, I may not be able to touch him, but if I can just get close enough to touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. Now she had faith. She had faith. Some of you are exercising faith by touching the prayer cloth that you receive. In the name of Jesus, uh, Jesus used Paul and handkerchiefs went from his body and they laid them on the sick and the sick were healed. Well, this woman pressed her way and she touched the hem of Jesus' clothing and she was healed instantaneously, ladies and gentlemen. God's word will not return unto him empty or void. So we've got to learn how to press, how to stay in the presence of the Lord. When the pains become more intensified, when the doctors shake their head, 
when the report gets more negative, we've got to fix our eyes on Jesus. We've got to have a made up mind. I'm going to trust in the Lord. We've got to be like Job. Job says, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. And Job trusted the Lord rather than trust his friends. He couldn't even trust his wife. He put his trust in the Lord, and God healed him, and God delivered him, and God restored him. And God will do the same for you. Lay hold on the word of God. Don't put your eyes on your circumstances. Don't even put your eyes on the pain or the fever or the feeling, Nathan. Put your eyes on Jesus. He is the healer. He said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. The scripture says, with his stripes you were healed. He was wounded for our transgressions. He, were, he was bruised for our iniquities. I praise God. I thank God for this opportunity to bring you a word of encouragement. I thank God for the word of encouragement. I'm excited about what God is doing in Israel Gonzalez's life. I'm excited about Zizla's prayer and how she stood in the gap when everybody was shaking their heads concerning Israel. Zizla had the, that had the faith to bring it to the attention of the online church. And we prayed and God's people prayed. And wherever two or more gather in the name of Jesus and gather in agreement, as touching upon anything we ask him in Jesus' name, that he will do. Jan Decker, God is a mighty healer. He's a mighty God. Christy Carpenter, God is a mighty healer. Praise God. So we're talking today about no weapon formed against you shall prosper. We're looking at part two. Now just to review part one, and you can get this video the recording on my YouTube channel, YouTube, Leroy Carter, or send me an email, and I will email it to you. Um, we looked at three weapons that Satan used in that part one. Satan uses deception. He's a master of deception. He uses deception and lies. And we looked at how Satan lied to Eve. He told Eve a big lie. He had Eve believing that God was holding some information from her, and, and she believed his lie, and, and, and Satan told Eve that the reason why God told you not to eat of that tree is because you'll be just as smart as he is, as intelligent as he is. And Eve was deceived, and she ate from that uh, fruit, and then Adam saw the whole scenario. He was in the garden watching the whole scenario. Every day he watched that serpent talk to his wife. And, and he was not the man of his household. He was not on guard like a man ought to be for his household. And then Adam, uh, uh, in his ignorance, uh, he was deceived too. And he ate of the fruit. And mankind lost their estate with God. Adam lost his salvation, ladies and gentlemen. He lost the gift of eternal life. He lost the gift of eternal life over a bite of fruit because he disobeyed God. And ever since that time, Satan has tried to deceive people. He lies. He's the master of lies. Ladies and gentlemen, you can't even believe what's coming out of Washington, D.C. these days. You can't even believe what's coming out of your state capital. You can't even believe what's coming out of your local local uh, 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 government. You can't even believe a lot of stuff coming out of the church today. But praise God, thank God that the Holy Spirit is, is not the altar of confusion. God is not the altar of confusion. The scripture says God is not a man that he should lie. We can believe God. And so I want to encourage you, study your scriptures. Study to show yourself approved unto God. Don't let anybody do any studying for you. You study the word of God for yourself. Draw nigh unto God. Spend your time. Make sure each day you're entering to his gates with thanksgiving in your heart. Enter to his courts with praise. Learn how to hear God's voice for yourself. Learn how even in the midst of confusion, even when the storms are raging in your life, even when the tornadoes are blowing and the cyclones are blowing, even when the forest fires are raging, 
You can draw a nigh unto the Lord. Put your trust in the Lord. The scripture says, I've never seen any man made ashamed who put his trust in in the Lord. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. All this is to tell you that God loves you, and God's got the plan for you. He said in his word, I know the plans that I have for you. I know the plans that I have for you. Some of us have gotten off track. Some of us have deviated from the word of God. Uh, some of us may have fallen into backsliding. Some of us stopped going to church and I praise God for the online church because we're reaching many who have left the church. We're reaching you, letting you know that God is not dead. God still loves you. He says, I know the plans that I have for you. And so Satan used deception to deceive Adam and Eve. And because of that, all mankind is born in sin, shaped in iniquity, and is born estranged from God, separated from God. And God uh, uh, loves us so much that he sent his only begotten son, Jesus, to die on the cross to pay for the sins of all mankind. And whosoever will believe in Jesus will not perish but shall have eternal life. God has made the plan plain. He's made it possible. Jesus has already died on the cross so that you and I can have eternal life. Not only that, but John, uh, Romans chapter 6 says, God who gave his only begotten son, will he not also give us all things along with him freely? And so salvation is free. Healing is free. Deliverance is free. You can sleep at night. Peace is free. Joy is free. Love is free. Happiness is free. Meekness is free. Gentleness, self-control. These are all gifts, uh, uh, fruits of the spirit. And God loves you. There is nothing he will withhold from us. And so the secret is to just press into his presence. Press through the fire, through the rain, through the forest fires, through the floods and the rains, through the snow and ice, Ryan, up in Pennsylvania, through the, the blizzards uh, in, in uh, Idaho or Washington, Christie, through the blizzards, through the desert storms, whatever the situation, press into the presence of God. Press. And God is only one mouthful away, one mouthful of words, and all you have to do is say, Jesus, I need you. Lord Jesus, I need you. And he's right there. The Bible says that for us believers, the Holy Spirit rises up in us like rivers of living water. God lives inside of us. God chooses to live inside of every believer. So he will not leave you nor forsake you. He has chosen to tabernacle with us. He's right inside of us. When troubles knock at the door, when sickness knocks at the door, when death tries to threaten us, the Holy Spirit is life in us. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. God will do all for you. He will do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. We also look. Uh, two weeks ago, and how Satan uses distractions, distractions to uh, uh, pull people away from God. You know, you may be going well, you're studying the Bible, you're going to church, you're on the online church, you're ministering, you're doing street preaching, you're giving out tracts, you're going to the hospitals, you're laying hands on the sick, and then all of a sudden, God may bring a, an attractive young lady or an attractive young man, uh, 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 and in these days, uh, Satan may Satan may bring uh, the same sex person, and 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 people are being distracted. Ladies and gentlemen, do not get throwed, as we say, throwed. Don't be distracted by Satan's uh, uh, malicious uh, attempts to pull you away from God. Stay focused on God. Keep your mind on the Lord. The Bible says, "He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Almighty." He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So you do your part, God will do his part. You stay focused on the Lord. Don't listen to your friends. Your friends might not be godly people. Even family members are, are, are say dumb things and do dumb things. But keep your focus on the Lord. Uh, we found out two weeks ago that Satan uses delays. So the three D's, 
deception, distraction, and delays. Uh, he loves to work with you and make you become impatient, uh, make you think that God has forgotten you, that God is not going to perform what he promised, and, and so many people quit too soon. So many people are like the miner in Arizona. He bought a mine, an old gold mine, and, and the previous owner had, had worked at prospect of that mine for 10 years and never hit a, a, a load of gold, and he quit. He boarded that mine up, and then he sold it to a guy, and the next, next guy took a pick and shovel and took his pick and hit that wall one time. Boom! And there was a whole wall of gold in front of him. If the previous miner had just hung in there just a little bit longer, if he had just persevered a little bit longer, ladies and gentlemen, a lot of us are like that first miner. We give up too soon. We quit. Well, Pastor, you don't know what these pains feel like, or you don't know what these bills look like, or you don't know what they're saying. Well, you didn't get the doctor's report that I got. Well, you didn't see these x-rays. No, no, I didn't. But I know, I know that my God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we're able to ask or think. And I also know this, the devil is a liar. I say this, Dustina, the devil is a liar. He's a deceiver. He's a distractor. He's a delayer. Ladies and gentlemen, we see in the Bible in Daniel chapter 10, Daniel fasted and prayed. He set his face towards the Lord, and he prayed and fasted. He wanted to hear from God what was going to happen to Israel, and Daniel stayed before the Lord. He said, I will not take any food, and Daniel fasted for 21 days, 21 days. Ladies and gentlemen, now, uh, Medical science will tell you that you, 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 uh, the human body can't last that long without food. And, and 40 days, 40 days, that's about it. The maximum Jesus did was 40 days and 40 nights without food. And, and, but Daniel fasted 21 days, and then the angel of the Lord appeared to Daniel, and Daniel said, hey, where have you been? Where have you been? And the angel of the Lord said to Daniel, listen. The very day that you set your face toward the Lord and you began to fast and pray, God heard you. God sent me out. He dispatched me 21 days ago. But let me tell you something, Daniel. I had to fight through the host of the demons. I had to fight against powers, principalities, ruler spirits, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. I had to fight against the prince of Persia to get here, and I've got to fight those demons to get back. In fact, I had to fight so much, I had to call the angel, Michael, to come and rescue me and assist me to bring your blessing to you. Ladies and gentlemen, when you call upon the Lord, give God the time to come to your rescue. Wait on the Lord. The Bible says over 60 sometimes, wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Learn how to wait on the Lord. Isaiah said, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. The scripture says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So the devil uses the weapon of delay to try to get you to stop trusting in the Lord. But don't fall for it. Don't fall for the okie doke. I'm going to introduce a few more uh, weapons of Satan today. I've given you three Ds, deception, distraction, and delays. Let's add four more Ds. We're looking at disappointment. We're looking at discouragement. We're looking at depression. We're looking at debt. These are big boys, heavy hitters, disappointment, discouragement, depression, and debt. We look at disappointment, and Satan uses disappointment. He uses it quite often. Have you ever done something significant for someone, and they fail to acknowledge what you did for them? That's called disappointment. They didn't even show their appreciation. You slaved over your stove, Dustina. You cooked all day long, and nobody said, thanks, Mom, for that meal. 
Yes, you were disappointed, but you kept on cooking the next day. Praise God, praise God. The next day, Nikki and Nathan and, and Destiny and Michael said, Thanks, Mom, for that delicious meal. But then think about all the times we have labored for someone. Uh, uh, taking money out of our bank account to buy somebody clothing or pay their rent for them. And people, some people never say thanks. That's called disappointment. But don't let disappointment pull you down. Don't let disappointment cause you to be bitter and angry with God. Let The Bible says, don't let any root of bitterness be found in us, lest many be defiled. When people disappoint you, let it go. Forgive them. Even if they don't thank you, forgive them. You let it go. You sat up all night with your neighbor and prayed for her while she was sick. And God uh, healed her early in the morning. And the neighbor got up the next day, got dressed, and, and been ro on a roll ever since. And never said thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, just let it go. Just let it go. Natalie Ortega, you know what I'm talking about. You've been there. You've sat up with people as a nurse all night long. And, and people never came to say thanks, but let it go. God knows. So don't let disappointment cause you to be sin. Because if you allow disappointment to cause you to be angry with anyone, it is called sin. The next D, the next weapon that Satan uses, is called discouragement. Discouragement. While some believers will not experience or accept disappointment, they will from time to time be subjected to discouragement. Don't let discouragement be a part of your life. Discouragement is a temporary feeling that occurs when somebody is not doing what they promised you they would do. Or things are not going the way you thought they would go or ought to go. Uh, that man says, yes, I'll go to church with you after we get married. He ain't been to church yet. And, or she said, oh, yes, 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 I'll do this and I'll do that. Just put a ring on my finger. Put a ring on it. And you put a ring on it, and she ain't done nothing that she promised to do. Ladies and gentlemen, this is called discouragement. Or the children, Mama, if you get me this, or Dad, if you buy me this, or this and that, or you put all your hopes and trust in that child, and that child went off and did the opposite of what you taught them. It's called discouragement. Don't let Satan get you into discouragement. Keep a good attitude, even when people let you down. Even when they do not fulfill their promises. Even when they do not they do what they said they would do. Keep a, a right attitude. And then remember, it's not all about you. Yes, they hurt your feelings, but it's not all about you. God's got a bigger plan. He's got a bigger picture. He's got a picture. And he will bring it uh, to pass. So stop entertaining your disappointment. Stop entertaining your disappointment. Stop focusing on that uh, discouragement. The next D is called depression. Depression. Yep, we've all been there. Depression, a.k.a. the pity me party. Uh, how you doing today, Martha? I ain't doing too good today. My children didn't even come for Thanksgiving. They didn't even call me. I didn't get a card. I mean, Martha is having her a pity me party. I mean, she is depressed. She is depressed. And ladies and gentlemen, when you find people, in, they're always depressed. Never a kind word. Never a hallelujah. Never a praise the Lord. That's a person you got to keep an eye out for. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I usually don't like to be around those people. And if I am, I'm going to bind that spirit of depression. Depression. I'm going to cast out that spirit of depression. And you know, anybody who wants to be delivered can be delivered. If you're willing to be delivered, you want to be delivered, you can be delivered. Because the Bible says in Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. But I know people, they love, I love to be depressed. I just want to be depressed. I'll just let me have one more day, one more day. My pity me party, I'm going to close my blinds, I'm going to uh, 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 lock the door, I'm going to turn the lights out, I'm going to get my bottle of Jim Beam, I'm going to smoke my reefer, I'm going to do my opioids, I'm going to just 
just one more time, one more. Some people love to be depressed. They love to wallow in self-pity. But, but no, 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 that's a demon. Uh, depression is a demon. Depression is killing people. Depression is destroying people's relationship with God. Depression is another lie from the devil. It's a trick of the enemy. No, 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 a thousand times no. You need to blow that depression demon out of the water. Well, how can I do that, Pastor? Oh, first of all, you bind that demon. If you find yourself depressed, you find yourself down, you're not feeling uh, up to yourself, uh, 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 you've got chains on you, then you, na you nail that demon, you call him by his name, you foul spirit of depression. Oh no, you're picking on the wrong person. I'm a child of God. You're messing in the wrong household now. Oh no, devil, you're in the wrong household. You're messing with the wrong man. You're messing with the wrong woman. I bind you by the authority of the name and blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, by the authority of Jesus. I remind you, devil, what Jesus did for you on Calvary, and I command that this depression leave me. Ladies and gentlemen, you can practice deliverance, self-deliverance. You can get your own self set free by opening your mouth and speaking to that demon of depression or speaking to any demon. You can bind that demon by the power of the tongue. You put the word of God on it and you call it a demon and say, you foul demonic spirit, I bind you in the name of Jesus. Now the Bible says, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then you command that demon to leave. If that demon doesn't leave right away, you bind it again. You command it to leave. And then you partner with Jesus. You partner with the Holy Spirit. The Bible says greater is he in us than he that's in the world. God's people do not have to be living in depression. God's people do not have to be living in depression. Well, Pastor Carter, you know... Uh, some people, uh, they're, they're, they were born depressed. Well, even if you were born depressed, you don't have to live depressed. Your mama and your daddy should have cast out that demon of depression uh, when you were born. But if they didn't know, now you know. And so use what you know. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no excuse for a lot of people going around being depressed. Some people are going around depressed because they love to be depressed. They love to be miserable, and they want to make you miserable. But I refuse to let anybody make me miserable. No, I lived in much misery when I was a sinner. But I'm now I'm saved, and I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. Do you hear what I'm talking about? I'm saved now. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. There's too much Holy Ghost inside of me for me to walk around depressed, pulling people down. There's too much Holy Ghost in you that anybody in your household can be depressed. Ladies and gentlemen, you start speaking the word of God in your household. You start anointing your household with oil. You start calling upon the name of the Lord and watch those demons flee. Demons tremble at the name of Jesus. They will flee in the name of Jesus. The Bible says resist the devil and he shall flee from you. Pastor Carl, you're kind of fired up today. Yes, I'm fired up. I'm fired up. I am fired up. I am fired up today because the Holy Ghost woke me up. God gave me another day. Hallelujah. And then we talk, We want to talk about the D, the seventh D, debt. Debt or debt. D-E-B-T, debt. A lot of people are going to go into debt. It's Christmas season. Well, you know, Christmas is for the kids. And so we're going to buy the kids all these toys and buy them this and buy them that. No, 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 no. Please, 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 please. Don't let the devil deceive you into getting uh, maxim maximizing your credit card, and then maximizing another credit card, and then borrowing from your relatives and borrowing from your friends and borrowing from your boss, all because of Christmas. No, 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 no. You're talking about the Grinch that stole Christmas. Satan is trying to steal Christmas through through buying and 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 and, and parading all these things in front of people and and and. Have you noticed, have you noticed that in these Christmas advertisements and the advertisements, they never use an ugly person to do a commercial. You ever see an ugly person doing a commercial? No, no. You won't find an ugly person doing a commercial because uh, marketers know that most people uh, purchase.
purchase because they think that what they're going to buy is going to uh, help them, enhance them, and change their lifestyle, change their attitude. So they don't use ugly people to do commercials. Uh, they use a uh, pretty woman to advertise cars or, or good-looking man to advertise milk or, or, or Kool-Aid or whatever. But uh, uh, the devil knows how to advertise. And this is a season where a lot of people go into debt. Go into debt. Uh, and, and that will take you years to get out. Ladies and gentlemen, keep your eyes on Jesus. Learn how to do without. Ask God to supply your every need. If you don't need it, you don't have to spend money for it. Do you really need it? Ask God to guide you. Order my steps in your word, Lord. Let no iniquity have dominion over me. Don't go into debt. Debt is evil. Debt is unpleasant. Debt brings pain. Debt brings unhappiness. Debt brings misery. And ladies and gentlemen, let's, let's lay it on the line. There are some people you're buying for for Christmas, and you know good and well what you buy, they're not going to be satisfied. I've never seen so much in my life as I see the, the day after Christmas. People run to the store the day after Christmas and take the gift that you work hard to buy for them, and they want to trade it in to get the money back. They are not satisfied. Ladies and gentlemen, there are people who cannot be satisfied. And why are you going to hurt yourself trying to satisfy them? You cannot satisfy certain people. If they don't like the gift you give them, praise God, shake the dust off your feet. Shake the dust off your feet. Keep on going. Keep on rolling. Don't be upset by it. But don't go into debt. Debt is bad. Debt is unpleasant. Debt gives pain. Debt brings unhappiness. Debt brings misery. Misery is debt's greatest friend. And so who's responsible for debt? Satan is. But Satan can't get you into debt unless you go along with his deception. And so be wise in the Lord. Call on the name of the Lord. Ask the Lord to help you. Ask the Lord to help you. Well, this week i uh, covered four of Satan's powerful weapons, we added on to the first three, deception, distractions, and delays. Then today we looked at disappointment, discouragement, and depression and debt. Next week, uh, Dustina will be bringing the word, praise God, and, and we're looking forward to the word. Uh, I'll be listening to the word from the Indianapolis air, air terminal. Dustina, you let the Lord use you. And then the following week, we're going to close out the No Weapon Formed Against Us Shall Prosper series with part three, where I will talk about sickness and disease. I will talk about doubt and unbelief. And I will talk about fear and worry and anxiety. We're going to look at three, sickness and disease, doubt and unbelief, fear and worry or anxiety. And we're going to put Satan under our feet. God has given us powerful weapons, more powerful than what the enemy uses. I want to encourage you to put your trust in the Lord. Put your trust in the Lord. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Don't go into debt this holiday season. Thank God for what you have. Be like Paul. Paul says, I am content wherever I am. I'm content whether I abound or whether I'm abased. I am content. Learn to be content with what God has given to you. And remember, our God will supply all our needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. Don't let the devil distract you by causing you to want what the Joneses have or what the Smiths have. You trust in the Lord. Thank God for what he's doing in your life. We're going to close out uh, the, the uh, uh, recording portion and we're going to Begin praying because there are many people on our prayer list, and we want to pray for you and your family uh, if you have a need. So stay on. We're going to end um, the recording in a moment. Father God, we thank you for this word. We thank you, God, that you have given us power and authority over all the enemy's weapons. We thank you. Thank you, Lord, for accepting us in the beloved. Thank you for Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. 
Thank you that he died on the cross that we might have eternal life. Thank you that you live in us in the person of the Holy Spirit. We trust you, Lord God. We love you. We bless you. And we honor you. And we thank you that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. So bless the listeners all over this nation, all over the world. Bless those who are listening to the, the recording. Meet every need they have. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. For those of you who are listening to the recording, you can contact me. Send me an email, LeroyCarter69 at Yahoo.com, or give me a call, uh, 770-559-9710. I'll be glad to talk with you, pray with you, and stand in the gap with you. And um, we praise God. Hallelujah.